Welcome to the Online Graduate Research Forum for Fall 2020. My name is Raul Trevino, your presenter. I'm a graduate student in the Masters of Science in Interdisciplinary Studies program in the Department of Organization, Workforce, and Leadership Studies. The title of my research study is From the Border to the Boardroom, a Non-Traditional Student's Acculturation Journey. I felt compelled to undertake this research because it covered two important themes for me. First, my paternal grandmother was an indigenous Mexican immigrant at the age of six in 1912. Her family fled from violence associated with the Mexican Revolution when her father was killed by the Carrancistas for refusing to disclose a cache of Pancho Villa's gold with which he had been entrusted. Second, and perhaps because of the first, I can't separate myself from the immigrants being forced to come to the United States today. I don't see myself as vastly different or better than these people. There is so much hatred and suspicion of all immigrants these days, but those coming across the southern border are bearing the brunt. From people believing that all Mexicans are rapists and drug dealers to government policies of family separations and children in cages, Americans demand that immigrants assimilate, but do they even know what that means? What is the process of acculturation and how does it relate to assimilation? My own experiences help to illustrate some of the challenges. The purpose of this study was to draw attention to the traumatic emotional and identity related impacts of acculturation on the individual. Three research questions guided the study. Why is it impossible to be bicultural outside of a border zone and difficult inside of it? What happens to the elements of cultural identity, suppressed from daily life, out of necessity? And why is it never enough, despite the damage to identity? The research design was interpretive autoethnography. As this was an autoethnography, the student was the only participant. Autoethnography can be defined as a combination of three elements, including auto, self, ethno, culture, and graphy, research. The result is a methodology which, through personal reflection or reflexivity, examines individual experience in order to better understand culture. Autoethnographic writing encompasses a breadth of styles from more to less academic. This variability made for a difficult road for the young branch of study which developed over the last th three decades of the 20th century. Autoethnography enjoys higher academic status today, but the variability remains. I leveraged data researched from the United States Census Bureau to create tables which I then converted to graphs in order to visually represent the assumptions I hoped to prove. I included several experiences as individual data points, which is in keeping with the autoethnographic method. These experiences are grouped to align categorically within the findings section. The binding factor to these three findings underscores the problem that acculturation is difficult and complex and immigrants deserve and need support, not mockery, hate, and suspicion on their journey to becoming American. Data from the U.S. Census Bureau aligns with Dr. David Montejano's graphical depiction of the Great Border region of Texas. The shaded area shows what is essentially a cultural buffer zone where even though the geographic region is Texas, USA, the culture is a blended Texas-Mexican culture which leans more towards Mexican the closer one gets to the border. A traditional university experience is a cultural rite of passage for immigrants and their descendants. My path to a traditional university experience was cut short due to my father's untimely passing when I was 16. I had to assume head of household responsibilities until my sisters were old enough to take over, as our mother was left with a degenerative condition after a bout of pneumonia. This confined me to South Texas and impeded my cultural adaptation. I was able to attend community college but lacked direction and attended for four years with three different majors. I was stuck in a cultural backwater and what was worse, I stuck out like a sore thumb in South Texas and was a walking cultural anomaly. The pressure to acculturate is great, especially if trying to succeed and improve one's socioeconomic status. However, there is more than internal pressure. Members of the original culture are likely to resent the changes in behavior in a person trying to acculturate. While on the other side, a member of a minority operating in the corporate workplace without a university credential is an outsider in two ways. The path to a bicultural identity is difficult. I've learned that acculturation doesn't mean complete abandonment of one culture for another. The ideal state for an established immigrant, which is third generation and beyond, is bicultural competency, or the ability to seamlessly switch from one set of cultural behaviors, language, etc. to the other. This is also known as code switching. 
The impact of the university experience is the completion and attainment of an academic milestone which contains the educational content, the interaction with peers and educators, and the behavioral adaptation that takes place in this process. The cumulative effect provides the self-esteem and confidence which complete the journey. An assumption of my study was that there is a regional cultural variance in Texas and that without a traditional university experience, it is difficult to break out of border behavior patterns. Future research should include more personal or narrative content because it is difficult at best to derive a story from purely quantitative data. New stories about immigrants sometimes mention difficulties encountered during the immigration journey, including lack of food or clothing to physical or sexual abuse and other crimes. Such stories are more impactful than data tables and Likert survey response statistics. Another avenue for future research would be to obtain a sample of respondents who admit to being anti-immigration. Studies which seek to learn more about what motivates people to be suspicious of immigrants or what experiences, assumptions, or understandings lie beneath the xenophobia could help social activists and other interested parties such as politicians and community leaders to develop interventions targeting the resistance to immigration and immigrants. I have submitted a manuscript of this research study for peer review in Qualitative Inquiry. On the page below, please indicate your anonymous preference for this study by clicking on one of the two icons, like or dislike. In addition, please post your comments or questions in the YouTube comments section below. I will respond to inquiries posted from November 16th through the 30th on this webpage. Thank you.